give him the nose. Another man stabs himself with a fork during dinner. <coughs> Someone's BMW gets smashed up. The host takes a short-legged dog for a walk and then goes to sleep. And the hostess takes her father to the hospital in California with a broken hip. And nobody cares two gunshots because everyone is dancing, including a woman named Cookie, who's been cooking all night, who can't sit, stand, or walk. I'm a real cop, you understand? You people have to deal with me. I'm not somebody named Elmer that your kids watch on the Disney Channel. Now I want some real answers, believable answers, and answers that don't make me laugh. But first, I want to talk to Mr. Charlie Brock and find out what the hell is going on here, including the possibility of him having two bullet holes in him. <laughs> now, I will give you five seconds to get him down here, or I will take two seconds and go upstairs and find him. Don't mess with me now. I am so close to a promotion, I can practically smell it. And I am not going to ruin it with this case. So, do I start counting or do I start climbing steps? It's up to you. Okay, wait, wait a minute. Just, let's just all calm down. <laughs> calm down the steps. Good. Calm, calm down the steps. You got one more, one more step. Thanks. <laughs> Ernie. Ten. She's, I mean, what? His name is Leonard Gant. Leonard Gant. Yeah. Don't you think it's time to call Charlie down here? Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Charlie! Hey, we're ready for you now. You ready for us now? Don't oh, relax, Charlie. It's just a hysteric nerve reaction. What's wrong with him now? He thinks he went temporarily blind. Just put some cold water in your eyes, Charlie, and calm down. There are two police officers here who want to speak to you. Why? Because you put on one finger, that's why! Charlie, <laughs> <laughs> oh, please calm down. The truth is, officer, we were only trying to protect Mr. Brock because he's a dear friend of ours. But we know that we're all in jeopardy if we hold back the truth. <laughs> the truth is, uh, officer, uh, there were two gunshots here tonight. I personally did not hear them. <laughs> but I share you with those who did hear the gunshots and did not come forth with that information. Despite me not hearing them. Just stop helping them so much, Glenn. Nevertheless, Mr. Brock is willing to tell us the full and complete story. The details of which none of us has heard yet. The details of, of the missing help, the disappearance of his wife, Myra, and two gunshots, which I didn't hear. Oh, God, I think I'm getting another spasm in my back. Oh, who gives a damn? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> hey, Lord, Charlie. <laughs> Mr. Brock. <coughs> I'm Detective Welch. This is Officer Putney. Please. Have a seat. <laughs> Take this down, Connor. Now, Mr. Brock, tell us everything that happened in this house tonight. Does anyone want lemon tart? Oh. Yes. <laughs> Not now, ma'am. Go ahead, Mr. Brock. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the story tonight. <laughs> as it happened, as I remember it, as I'm telling it, oh my god. <clears throat> Well, here goes. 
<laughs> At exactly six o'clock this evening, I arrived home from work. My wife, Myra, was in her dressing room, getting ready for the party. I grabbed a bottle of champagne from the refrigerator, and I headed upstairs. Rosita, the Spanish cook, <laughs> was in the kitchen with Ramona, her Spanish sister, and Romero, her Spanish son. <laughs> they were preparing an Italian dinner, and they were uh, waiting for Myra to tell them when to start the dinner. As I climbed the stairs, I said to myself, it's my 10th wedding anniversary. <laughs> and I can't believe I still love my wife so much. Myra was putting on the perfume I bought her for Christmas. I purposefully buy it for her because it drives me crazy. <laughs> I tapped on the door. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> She opens it. I hand her a glass of champagne and I uh, make a toast. To the loveliest wife that has never aged a day in ten wonderful years. She says to the best man and the best ten years a beautiful wife ever had. I say to the loveliest skin on the loveliest body that again has never aged a day in ten wonderful years. She says to the gentlest hands that have ever stroked the loveliest skin, the loveliest body that has never aged a day in ten pretty good years. We drink, we kiss, and we toast. We drink, we kiss, and we toast. We drink, kiss, we will be toasting. <laughs> it's now 7 o'clock, and uh, the bottle is finished. My wife is sloshed, and I'm completely toasted. <laughs> and then, I smell the perfume. The perfume I could never resist. I loved her in that moment with as much passion and ardor as the night we were first in the West. <laughs> I tell you this, not with embarrassment, but with the pride <laughs> and joy for a love that grows more strong and lasting as each new day passes. <laughs> we lay there, naked. Oh. <laughs> we think of each other's happiness. <clears throat> It is now 8 o'clock, and outside it's grown dark, when suddenly we hear a knock at the door. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> the door swings open, and a strange young man looks down at us with a knife in his hands. Myra screams. I jump up and run for the gun in my drawer. Myra grabs a bash towel and tries to shield herself. I run back in with the gun ready to save my wife's life. The strange young man says in Spanish, Yo, quito, sit down, no hay nada malo, porque son quito, minuto. But I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> I have never seen Rosita's son Romero before, and I didn't know the knife was to cut up the salad, and he was asking, should we heat up dinner now? <laughs> so I get him aim the gun at him. Myra screams and pulls my arm, and the gun goes off right through my earlobe. Bang! Ow! <laughs> Rosita's son Romero runs downstairs and tells Rosita and Ramona, Mamma say that me lo que pasa al hombre de Papa ya, el hombre que loco que bang bang. The crazy man took a shot at him. So Rosita, Ramona, and Romero leave in a huff. I'm bleeding all over Myra's new dress. Myra grabs a bathrobe and runs downstairs to stop Rosita, Ramona, and Romero, otherwise we will have no dinner. But they drive off in their uh, Alfa Romeo. <laughs> I look out the window, but it's dark now, and I think somebody is stealing my beautiful old Mercedes, so I take another shot at them! Bang! Myra runs downstairs to the basement where we keep the cedar chest. 
She's looking for the dress she wore last year to bonds for Israel. But she can't find the light, trips down the stairs, and passes out in the dark. I run downstairs looking for Myra and notice that the basement door is open. And afraid that strange looking kid is coming back, I lock the door, not knowing that Myra is still down there. Then I run upstairs to get some aspirin for my ear because it's killing me from the hole in it with the, the gunshot, you know, the gun. <laughs> but the blood in my ear gets in my eyes, and by mistake, I take four Valium instead. <laughs> Suddenly, the doorbell rings. It's the first guest. I want to tell them to look for Myra, but suddenly, I can't talk from the Valium, and I'm bleeding all over the rug. So I start to write a note explaining what happened, but the note looks like gibberish, and I'm afraid they'll think it was a suicide note and call the police. And my good friend, Glenn Cooper, was coming. Glenn Cooper, come on, Glenn, Glenn Cooper. Always running for state senate. And it would be very bad for his campaign to get mixed up in a suicide, so I tore up the note and flushed it down the toilet just as the first guests were entering the room. They're asking me, what happened? What happened? And before I can tell them what happened, I pass out on the sofa. And that's the, uh, whole damn story. As sure as my name is, uh, Charlie Brock. <laughs> I buy it. <laughs> you know why I buy it? I buy it because I liked it. I mean, I didn't believe it. I liked it. You know, I love my wife too. That's why I wanted to get home early. <laughs> you know what? Sorry to bother you folks. Take care of that here, Mr. Brock, and happy anniversary. <laughs> Where? Where in the whole wide world did you finally get to tell a story like that? Oh, I made it up. Oh, of course you made it up, but when? As I was telling it. Sentence by sentence, word by word. Didn't know where the hell I was going, but I just kept going. You don't even speak Spanish. I made the Spanish up too. You bastard! We put him under the jump for perjury! I know! That was the challenge. The ultimate chutzpah. This was the best time I ever had in my life. Well, I'm impressed. I'm sincerely and deeply impressed, Bunny. You have, without a doubt. One of the latest lines I've ever come across. <laughs> to Lenny, my oh, husband, just when I was getting bored with our marriage, I fell in love all over again. To Lenny, to, Lenny. to me. <laughs> I have an interesting question. What? What do you really think happened to Charlie and Myra? Hello? Yes, Charlie. We're all here. For you. And for having some visitors. It's wonderful. We're dying to hear the whole story. We're on our way now. It's Charlie. He's going to tell us the entire story. Oh, well, I hope it's shorter than Lenny's story. We can that later in the record money. Oh, my, you're a thousand percent, Angel. Open the door! Open the door! Let me out! Well, who is it? Yeah. <laughs>